Well, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're watching this, praise God. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in praise God, not being moved by what we see or by what we feel, but only by what we believe, praise God. And guess what we believe today? We believe that God is who he says he is. He has what he says he has, and he will do what he says you can do in your life, whether you are present, experienced or not, praise God. Just here to encourage you, don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by how you feel. You only, be, you only be moved by what you believe, and you need to believe, and I need to believe, in spite of our circumstances, praise God, that God will do what he says he will do, praise God. Guess why? Because you and I are who God says we are. <clears throat> if God says we're more than a conqueror, then we have to take that as our final word word as our standard of faith and if God says we have what he says he have we must take that as our standard of faith praise God and not be moved by what we see about what we feel but only by what we believe praise. so my name is Apostle Alfred Craig for you that do not know me I'm excited about being with you today amen and, and I've got a great word for you today praise God because God is, is, is giving you and I the opportunity to serve him, praise God. Can you imagine the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of heaven, the God of the whole universe, has given you and I the opportunity of serving him, amen, and, and, and being a part of his kingdom and a part of what he's doing in the earth today? That's right. That's who you are. That's who I am, praise God. And so it's exciting having the opportunity of serving Jesus Christ at this level, praise God. So God's doing a great thing. And, and he's not finished on this earth yet. I don't care what's going on around the world, praise God. I don't care who is, who is trying to make him common now, but God is still everything he says he is. He's still doing everything he says he's doing. So th what we're going to be doing today is this, is that, you know, God been letting my heart to really reach out for souls. Again, of course, I believe in all the word of God. I believe in faith. I believe in prosperity. I believe in, in people living their best lives now. Amen. And I believe in heaven, praise God. And I believe in hell. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know, one thing that we need to all we need to not forget, <clears throat> and that is the importance of praying for the lost souls. Amen. Jesus Christ spent a lot of time in prayer, sometimes all night long, praying for the lost, praying for souls in Jesus' name. So today we're going to talk about that because whether you have family members or friends or neighbors or whatever there, they need you and I to stand in the gap for them and begin to pray for them. Is that right? So one thing I, I want to say this, and that is, as we talk about church growth, we talk about ministry growth and things like that, but specifically today about the kingdom of God growing, the, you know, churches growing, because many churches, especially after COVID, has had a challenge, you know, growing and, and getting back in tune again and like that. But, but remember this, God is still everything he said he is in Jesus' name. Now, this is what I want to share with you as we talk about praying for the lost today, praying for souls today. And that is, number one, the church growth begins with intercession, not socialization. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You know, church growth does not begin what, but you know, uh, sometimes say, well, we're going to, we're trying to start a revival. I'm, I'm, I'm all the, I'm, I'm all the social media. Praise God. And that's wonderful. I, I'm on that too. Praise God. I'm on social media also. You know, you know all the different uh, things that God, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those kind of things. But you know what? When they got recognized that, that Facebook and Twitter and Instagram cannot pray for us. <laughs> Now you follow me. Your iPad cannot pray for you, praise God. There's a still an element, in spite of all the different tools that we have today, that you and I must still, you know, employ in order for us to really see revival like Jesus wants to give it to you in your church, in your ministry, whatever there. There's still some things we got to learn. We got to begin. We got to really begin to pray for the souls and not just hoping that they're going to come. Amen. In, in, in that area. So that's very important. So let me show you a scripture in the book of uh, first, uh, first Timothy chapter two and verse number one. It says this. He says, I, this is Paul speaking. He said, I exhort therefore that first of all, <clears throat> supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness. So we can see here <clears throat> that God is saying it to us, to you and I, that it's our responsibility, not through socialization, but through intercession, <laughs> amen, that we, he wants us to pray and intercede uh, for all men, giving thanks for them, 
because he says, for all also that are in authority, you and I may complain about those on authority, <laughs> amen, but he said that you and I can, uh, can turn the thing. The Bible said the hands of the king, or the head of the king is in the, is in the arms of God, is in the hand of God. God can turn it, and, but, but it's up to you and I to begin to pray those prayers. He said, because for all that are in authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life. That means that those on authority, God has ordained uh, uh, you know, to, to, to be over certain elements and things like that. He said, well, we pray for them. He said, that, he said that we can lead a quiet and peaceful life. And how many of you need a more quiet and a more peaceful life in Jesus' name? So we see this then. He said this is, uh, then he says in verse 4, he says this, who will have all men, who will have all men. See what it says there? Who will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So God, God is looking for, uh, for his people who will take the time to pray for all men, all women, all children, go into intercession for them because it is the will of God that all men be saved. And then if you notice here in, third, in Second Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9 what it says, it says, the Lord is not slack. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. See, so it's not the will of God that no one in your family not get saved. It's not the will of God that any one of your friends are not saved. It is the perfect will of God, the Bible says, that all men are saved. But he says that we, you and I, must move into prayer for them, but move into intercession for them so that God can begin to send angels, praise God, to reach out to them and get them saved in Jesus' mighty name. So as we see this then, let's go over a couple of points here. Number one, you know, wh why should we pray? Well, why is that necessary that we pray? Because, you know, uh, you know we, 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 want, we want people to get saved. You know, in those areas, but why should we, why is it important for us to be saved, to, to pray? You know, uh, I remember when I got saved, you know, uh, uh, no one, no one invited me to church that, uh, it was on a Thursday night back in 1970, uh, 1974, no one invited me to church that day. Uh, you follow me? And even, even on Sunday, no one really invited me to church that Sunday. But, the, uh, you know, but now I know what it was. They, they, they had been in a prayer, they call it a prayer revival, that church that I ended up getting saved in. And it was, that, it was through the prayers of the people not knowing who they were praying for. <laughs> you follow me? God was using them to pray for me, and, and, and the Holy Spirit brought me into the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, I was, I was, I was that, night, on that Thursday night, I was actually walking, running around on any school road smoking marijuana. <laughs> Amen. And I also had the idea, um, my friend's uh, a girlfriend uh, they, they was, having a, was having a Bible in their church. And so we decided, you know, let's go there. We, just, we and him decided that, we, we, you know, we were getting high. Let's go to church. Let's go to that church tonight. And so we went in there high and things like that. So, but nobody invited us. We were not invited. So what I'm saying is that, but they were in a, they had been in a prayer revival. Uh, and we're going to talk to you about how that happens here. See, so notice what it says in, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. It says this. It says, likewise, the spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <clears throat> and I'm sure that many times when, <clears throat> when they were praying that, uh, at that church, sometimes they did not know what they, who they was praying for or what they prayed for as they ought. The Bible says as they ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us according to the will of God. And so that's what I'm saying is that many times the Holy Spirit will have you praying for people that you don't even know who you're praying for and things like that. But the, but the, but the Spirit of God will be on you to pray in the Spirit and there's a burden come on your heart. But many times because the Holy Spirit is taking a hold of your spirit, are you following me, to begin to pray and intercede for someone that is right now either near hell, praise God, and I was on my way to hell, praise God, or that it's time for them to come into the kingdom of God. And, but so we can see it said that when, we, when you and I don't know what to pray for as we ought, we don't know who to pray for as we ought, we don't know what's going on in their lives, but the Holy Spirit using us can pray, can pray for them through us the will of God for their lives. So what are we to pray then? Number one, we need to ask the Father, give us the souls of men in this city. 
you know, whatever city you're in, right now, I'm called to the state of Arizona. Amen. Maybe Las Vegas, too. I don't know where, you know, God may have us plant churches in Las Vegas also. But, 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 you have, but wherever city you're in, you pray, God, you know, give me the souls of this city. Amen. You know, uh, right now, Arizona. You know, I, I'm asking God, Lord, give me souls because God spoke in my heart about, you know, planting 50 churches. So I'm asking God for the souls of Arizona. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I'm asking God for leadership. I'm asking God for people that are going to be on my team. But I, I understand I've got to ask for those. It, it, it just don't happen. Uh, you know, it don't just happen. You have, the Bible says you have to ask for those. And, and let, let's notice a couple of scriptures on that kind of give you some proof text on that. Notice what it says here uh, in Psalms 100, verse number 3. It says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So we're talking to the one who owns the sheep and the pastor that they're grazing in. Praise God. Uh, you're following me. And so that's why we need to start asking him, Lord, give me the souls of this city. Give me the souls of this, of this nation. Give me the souls of this state. Amen. In those areas. And then look here at uh, 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 Psalms chapter 2, verse number 8, what it says. It says, he's, this is God saying, ask of me. And I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. God says, I'm in heaven, and, I, and, and it's my desire for my will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, but I need you to ask me for the heathen. <laughs> you follow me? I need you to begin to ask for those souls to be saved in Jesus' name. Because he said, it is my will. Amen. That everyone may say, but one man say, it, 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 it seems like God has limited what he would do on this earth to the prayers of the saints. Anybody you follow me to the prayers of the saints, but 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 when when God hears the prayers of the saints, He says, "Okay, I can go to work in the earth now because I got someone now that's asking me for the heathen. They're not just complaining about the heathen. They're not just talking about the heathen, but they're actually praying and asking me for the heathen." And then notice in Ezekiel chapter thirty-six, verse uh, uh, thirty-seven says, "It says this is the Lord says this. He said, Thus of the Lord God, I will yet for this." be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them, I will increase them with men like a flock. God says, if we will inquire of him for the people, he says, I'll do it. <laughs> Amen. I'll do it. So God is saying, you know, he said, I'll increase them with men like a flock. So God said, but, but you got to inquire. You got to inquire of me for the people that I want to send into your church, that, that I want to send into your ministry. He said, but you got to begin to inquire of me for those in Jesus' name. And then look what Luke, he says in Luke chapter number, uh, also he says in Luke chapter number 9, verse chapter 11, verse number 9, he says this. He says, this is Jesus talking, and he said, I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and and it shall be open unto you. Verse 10 says, for everyone that asks receives, and, to, and, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. So what God is saying then, if I don't ask, it won't be given. If I don't seek, I won't find. If I don't knock, the door will not be opened. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I remember I, I was reading a story about, about um, uh, Dr. Yonge Cho, who later on became one, you know, one of the uh, uh, pastors of the largest church in the world. But he said what happened was he was a Buddhist, and God, and God began to send this young, little young girl to him, you know, talking about Jesus to him. But he said, no, I'm a Buddhist. I already got my religion like that. He said, but she kept on coming. He said, and she, started, and she would come and just cry, you know, you need, you need to receive Jesus in your life. Neither, neither did this little girl know that God was using her to, to, to get a, a young man saved that would be that would birth out the largest church in the world. But this young girl, she wouldn't quit. She kept on praying for him. She kept on asking God for his salvation. And finally, he gave in and got saved. Glory to God. And thank God he did because what God is doing on the earth today, a, a lot of it right now, is directly res, uh, in response to him getting saved. You know, uh, you know having to be the first pastor, have about a million people in his church, are you following? But it happened through one young girl that interceded, one young girl that went to him and, and talked to him and cried and, and, and had a burden to see him get saved. So you never know who God is using you to, to, to birth out in the kingdom of God. 
Are uh, you following me? So, you know, so that's why it's so important that we do this. And so point number two, this is my point number two, is we must ask the Holy Spirit to release his whistling and driving wind into the, uh, this church. In other words, to begin to drive people into this church. Uh, in other words, we want him to make his irresistible sound to the captives ordained to eternal life in our cities. Meaning this, that the Holy Spirit is a driving force. No, not a forcing force, but a driving force. Like I said, I'm on, I'm on any school road that night. Amen. And the Holy Spirit drove me, <laughs> you follow me, to that church that day, praise God. And then that Sunday morning, he drove me again there. Not forcefully, but it was a driving. I knew that, he, that he, he's the driver, glory to God. And so we got to begin to ask the Holy Spirit to do the same thing uh, in, in our lives in Jesus' name. Because God wants us to increase. God wants your church to increase. But just hoping that they increase, complaining they don't increase, and saying that the, the because of COVID it didn't happen. No, we got to begin to overcome all of that and say, so, no, God, I've asked you to release your whistling. You ever, you know, many times, you know, if we was in the country and somebody knew how to whistle, they would whistle, you know, you know and, and, and certain whistling they would, get, they would, they would give, they, they would say, come on in. <laughs> Amen. Come on in, praise God. Well, the Holy Spirit has a whistle. Amen. And, and, and they, that's connected to the ears of the lost. Are you following me? And he can release his whistling wind to drive people and, uh, into our churches, into our ministries in Jesus' name. See, notice what he says here in the book of uh, Isaiah. From him. Look what he says in Isaiah. And this is in the Living Bible. Look what he says here. It says, he will send a signal to the nations far away, whistling to those at the ends of the earth, and they will come racing toward Jerusalem. Glory to God. Can you see that? He said that God will send <clears throat> his whistling wind. Amen. And people are going to come. Amen. Uh, oh, my God. That's good. Racing toward your church. Racing toward your ministry. Or if you're in business, this same principle, remember the customer is going to start coming racing toward your church. You're going to say, well, I mean, your, your business. So where are they coming from all of a sudden? Well, you, you, the Holy Spirit is, is, is driving them into your business. He's driving them into your ministry because see, the Holy Spirit can operate over and above what man can do. Are you following me? So he's saying, call unto me, <laughs> amen, and I will answer you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone that asks will receive. And so that's all it says today. It's time for us to really start praying for souls to come in. Because it's, it's not God's will that any should be lost. It's the will of God that every person on earth is saved and born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, but I need you to begin to pray for lost souls in Jesus' name. Notice what he says here in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, and verse number 2, he says this. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, glory to God, and it filled all the house where we're sitting. So anytime the Holy Spirit comes in, he comes in like that, praise God, and, and he'll come in like that, that, that wind will blow, praise God. And, and, and remember I talked to you the other day that when it happened, over 3,000 people got saved the first day on, on Peter's first sermon. The Holy Spirit that came in like a wind and anointed Peter, and, and that, 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 that wind of the Holy Spirit threw, uh, brought 3,000 the same day. A couple of chapters over, chapter 4, it says, and 4,000 men got saved. <laughs> Amen. And then I think in chapter 5, it says, multitudes got saved because the Holy Spirit is the wind and he brings in large crowds. And see, sometimes in America, we, we kind of, we you know, uh, talk ourselves out of that kind of move of God, but it's happening in other parts of the world. Churches are being uh, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 people almost come becoming the norm to understand people understanding how to connect with the Holy Spirit and let him begin to drive people, amen, into the church and, and, and drive you and I to, to go out and win them to Jesus, amen, connecting them with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's what we're saying today. It's time for us to pray. God, give me a heart and a burden to pray for the lost, so, and the Holy Spirit that you'll begin to send this wind in Jesus' name. So notice what happens here in, in Numbers chapter 11, verse number 31, when that wind comes. It says, and there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp. Now the children of Israel are way out there in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> amen, and yet the Lord sent the wind, amen, to cause the, the, those quails to leave the sea. Go out and, and, and drive them into the camp 
and let them fall for the children of Israel without the help of the children of Israel. Are you following? So what I'm saying is when, when the Holy Spirit is moving like that, he'll do things like that. He'll call people just drop into your church, drop into your business, praise God, drop into your ministry, praise God, because you begin to pray for them and, and you begin to connect with the Holy Spirit and he begins to do the work that he desires to do in your life and in your ministry and in your business in Jesus' name. So notice here point number three is this. Go through, so therefore let's go, through, go, go throughout your city and ask the Father, give me the souls of men. See, in other words, he says, because if you ask, he said, he said, if you ask, I'll give them to you. He said, so we got to go out through this city and uh, whatever city you're in, a state you're in, I, I believe in God for the whole state of Arizona. Praise God. I live. I, you know, right now I've got, I've got uh, 50 zip codes right now that, that, that I begin to pray about and, and certain things. And that I've already seen that we're going to plant churches in throughout the whole state of Arizona. I mean, because I, I, I'm serious to put, God, this is in my heart. I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant with this right now. I believe in God for 50, glory to God. You know, ch churches that are, that are tuned in with God, people that are tuned, faith feel, Holy Ghost speaking, praise God, uh, word talking, you know, uh, victory, victory living people in Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. But, but we got to pray. We got to pray that. We got to begin to say, Lord, you know, give me the souls of men. Give me those people that are hurting. Give me the people that are lost. You know, the people that are hungry and are crying out to you, God, like, like, like God raised up Moses to be that intercessor you know, for the children of Israel. They were in Egypt, but God said, I'm sending you, Moses, to be an intercessor for them and let me use you to bring them out of Egypt into Canaan land. So God is using you and I for that very purpose. But our, our, the first part of him using us has to be through our prayers. Amen. Through our prayers. God has limited what he will do on this earth to the prayers of the saints. Amen. Praise God. So, so here's a prayer right here. Here's a prayer. Pray this prayer. So Spirit of God, make your sound in their ears that they cannot resist. Drive them with your forceful wind into our church. Amen. Let this Sunday be filled with men and women who cannot tell how they got there. Amen. And that's how I was for years. You know, I, I had no idea. So I, nobody invited me that day. Nobody, you know, came and, 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 and wanted me to, uh, and took me to church today. The Holy Spirit drove me. Praise God. It, was, it, was, it wasn't a, a forceful type drove, but it was an irresistible type driving. Well, he, he, he brought his irresistible presence, and that thing drove me in, uh, in, in those areas. And, and so that's what the Holy Spirit is doing to so many people right now. They might be in the nightclubs, right? They might be, they might be alcoholics. They might be drunkards, right? They might be going through marital problems, divorce, and things like that. But the Holy Spirit knows how to drive people in. I remember this one couple, uh, you know, I had a, a lot of young people that was getting saved in our church in Coolidge. And, uh, and, and I remember these, these three young kids, their parents getting ready to get a divorce. And, and they prayed, this is a Saturday, we prayed that Saturday night. They said, a Pastor, pray for our parents. They're getting the divorce, that they can come get saved. Now, they, neither one of these parents had never really been in church before, and never visited our church before, but those kids prayed that night. And that next morning, those, those two parents came in. And, 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 and the man came up immediately, got saved. But the mother said, you know what, I want to get saved, but if I got to get saved, do I got to go back with him? I said, no, you ain't got to go back with him. Just give your life to Jesus Christ. Well, what happened, praise God, she gave her life to Jesus Christ. God suffered a heart. Amen. They both got saved and went into ministry and, and, and was in our church for several years and I'm going into ministry. Praise God. I'm saying that God can do things when people pray. God even said this, well, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, he said, and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. And so I'm believing God that as we begin to move in prayer for our cities, prayer for the people in our cities, that the Holy Spirit is having now a vehicle he's using in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Can you see that today? So, so, so that's a prayer. So point number, this, point number four is this. Pray for the Holy Spirit to not only bring them, but to convict them. Pray for the Holy Spirit to not only bring them, but also to convict them. He is the one that does convicting. We, he, we, don't, we, don't have to, we don't have to try to condemn them. If, if we, we create the, uh, the Holy Spirit's presence in there, give him a, a seat in our church, praise God, so to say, that he will do the convicting. Amen? He'll do the convicting. See, notice what he says here in, in, in Acts chapter number 4, verse 31, when Peter preached the gospel. It says, and when they had, uh, okay, no, it's Acts chapter 4, verse 31, I'm sorry. When they had prayed, the place was shaken 
together where they were assembled and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake with word of God with boldness. See, so prayer, when we pray, it shakes up things. And it said they were all, everybody was in prayer. Now, these are people that had already been filled with the Holy Ghost in, the, in Acts chapter number two. But they, they, they moved back into prayer. <clears throat> and so they didn't just see that one time in prayer as, 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 as all we needed. But it, here is in chapter number four, they come together again in prayer. That's why we come together in prayer before services today. Even though we're filled with the Holy Ghost, but when they came back together in prayer, and they began to pray God's sin signs and wonders, you know, do miracles, praise God. And it said, when they had prayed, the play was taken together in Jesus' name. And everybody got filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak the word of God with boldness. That's how we pray, have prayer before our services, as we come together as the body of Christ in Jesus' name. <clears throat> so notice this here, as we see this, and what happened as a result of that prayer, Acts chapter number 5, it says, And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. I believe God is sending multitudes to the, to the churches now. You know, that we don't have to have a little bit of small five-member churches anymore. But if we can get, my people, get the people of God to pray like they did and come together in prayer, he said that then in chapter 5 it says, Multitudes came to the Lord. I believe God for multitudes to be saved throughout Arizona. Amen. That for churches being full of, of new converts, not just arguing and fussing over a few people that leave this church and go to that one, that one goes to that one. But I mean, new, I think over 7 million people, I think it was, in Arizona. I'm trusting God, amen, to fill up churches, glory to God. At least the ones he called me to do, 50 of these, amen, with people who, who, who are near as hell, hurting people, praise God. But he cannot do it if we don't begin to pray and intercede for them. And so I pray today that God enlists you and I into this prayer movement that God is doing throughout the state of Arizona and wherever, whatever state you're in, wherever you're at around the world or around the United States, I pray that the anointing of prayer is on your life to pray for the law, to pray for souls, because God is sending them in by his wind, praise God. All he needs is your prayer and my prayer, praise God. Now, as we see this today, as we look at this, I I'm going to be in Phoenix because God has called me to the state of back to the state of Arizona. You know, I, I pastored in Arizona for almost, oh my God, it was 40 years. But for the last six years, I've been in Las Vegas, my wife and I, and, and God just kind of like, you know, uh, gave me a fresh insight and in, in vision and things like that, kind of refreshed my vision in some areas. You know, and, and, and now he said, I'm sending you back to the state of Arizona, literally to plant 50 churches. It's been challenging because, you know I mean, I thought me showing up back there is going to be different. But, you know, people have gone on about their own business. Some, some of my great members I had before, they've gone about their own business, which is great. And so it's kind of like me rebirthing, like having a brand new baby again. You know, you can't, you can't go through the birth of the last baby you had. You got you to birth this new baby. So it's been kind of, it's been, you know, a little challenge in those areas. But God told me, so you got to rebirth it. It's like a brand new baby you're having. You got to rebirth this thing. And so I, I'm, so God put in my heart, the first thing you need is a team. You, you know, you got to get, you have to, Jesus, before he began to feed the 5,000, he got a team. So I'm believing God for individuals that will be a part of my team in that area uh, to help me with these 50 churches that God's going to do. Some of you will be raised up as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Some of you will be ministry of help. Some of you got to know it for business to be able to finance it in Jesus' name. But I'm believing God for a team of people that God attaches us together to work together to fulfill his design and his purpose. For the, remember the Bible said when Paul saw the vision in Acts chapter 16, verse 10, 9 and 10, when Paul saw the vision, the people that were with him said God has called us to do it. I'm believing God for people that are joined with me as a part of this vision, as their call from God, so that we together can make this thing happen for the glory of God in Jesus' name. So this coming, this coming Sunday, this coming Saturday, rather, I'm going to be in Phoenix. Uh, I'm calling a Catch the Vision uh, team luncheon, uh, October 28th. We're going to be there uh, at the One Hour Church. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's for One Hour Church, but it's at the BJ's restaurant there. Uh, and, and you can see the injury address on there. And if you're on Facebook, I've got the link on there, or you can use the QR code right there. I'd like to, I'd like to see you come to, uh, and be a part of that. No, nothing long. There's going to be nothing long. I want to I connect with you. I want to get to know you. I want you to get to know me, ask me questions like that. And, it, you know, you may not know for sure this is what God's called you to do, but you may say, Dr. Craig, I'm least interested, you know, to see what you got to say. And I may ask you some questions. So feel free to come. It's no cost. Of course, you can buy your little luncheon, but you ain't got to spend a lot of money. You can buy some french fries if you want to buy a salad, whatever you want to do. The main thing, we want to connect together. That's going to be this coming Saturday, you know, in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's, it's going to be there. At, I'm calling the Catch the Vision Team Luncheon. 
October 28th at 12 p.m. Big Jets Restaurant. And, 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 and but I would like for you to register so I can know how many people are coming. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have a little room together and things like that. So if you if you would like to come, click the link, uh, or use the QR code, register so I can you know be, be expecting you. Let's connect together as a team. You know, like like the, like the uh, uh, dream team, and that God's going to use uh, for this particular assignment for the state of Arizona. Praise God! And I'm trusting God that it's that it's done. I'm praying God for you. And then also, just want to just say this: I'll, I'll also be in Phoenix live there uh, at, at our church there in Phoenix, Arizona. There, uh, you know, uh, on, on 48th Street and in, in, uh, in Broadway. So you can also be a part of that. Uh, uh, we start at 9 a.m., but for those that are on, online, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever there, it'll be at 10, 9, 10 a.m. But uh, luckily, you know, if, you, if you got a chance, come on out be with us on that also, or just, or just watch us on Facebook or Instagram. You can let's connect together. That way you can keep hearing. I believe that as I'm speaking, God is connecting many of you, your ears to my, to my voice, because God has anointed me for this task. I believe that God's anointing you like God told Moses, you take the people that you have, and I'll take the spirit that's upon you and place it upon them. They can work with you. So I'm believing God for those that, that God attaches to me. We, God attaches together. That the same grace and anointing that God has on my life, he's going to place it upon you. So you will walk in the same anointing for the state of Arizona, 50 churches in Jesus' name. And no matter what you're called to, you may be called, you may be called into the ministry part, fivefold ministry as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. You may be a ministry of helps or you may be a business person that God's called you to business. We need all of it. To fulfill what God has for our lives, I, I, I will be establishing a ministry and institute that are to help train individuals for ministry. We'll also be establishing a business institute to help train those in business that have a call for business. You know, so we can we can see Arizona change for the glory of God. We can see a lot of these people that are homeless and drug addicts and people come out of prison. We can see them come to Jesus Christ, Amen, and 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 and, and learn about Him. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light in Jesus' name. And then also just want to say that I'm on here every Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. You know, uh, teaching you the word of God because we're believing God that on, that on, um, we're believing God that on uh, January the 7th, we're going to have a, a major church launch. Uh, two churches, one in South Phoenix, one in West Phoenix, and plus we're going to launch an online church for those that are, are not near us, that are around the world, both here in America or throughout Arizona, around the world, we'll have a, a, a launch an online church. So we're not launching a, a, a location in Phoenix, South Phoenix with a location in West Phoenix, and then an online church, praise God. Uh, we're believing God on that day for 300 people totally, amen, on that day. So we're, that's why we're praying. We're giving, I'm going to teach you on faith. We're, going, we're believing God together for that. And then we're going to believe God for, for, for increase from that point on until God creates a large ministry there in Arizona for the glory of God. Amen. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to being with you. Before we dismiss, as always, for you that are my partners, I, again, let me say thank you on behalf of myself and Dr. Bell as you partner with us in your finances. Bible says, as we sow into your life, then you, then you correspond with your seed, amen? And that is through your tithe and your offerings, praise God. And so I thank God for all of you that have been so faithful over these years, praise God. Amen. Even many of you that have been faithful before I started the church, you were faithful through Facebook, praise God. You've just been sowing into the ministry. But I want to invite all of you that listen, if, if this message has been a blessing to you, if, if, if you feel a connection to me, you know, in, in one way or another, pray. And, and yield to the Holy Spirit. He'll speak to you concerning supporting this ministry. And, and I receive you as my partners. I receive you as my team members that God has joined us together. And I pray for you right now. I pray for your family that you'll begin to sense a tangible presence and anointing of God that is on myself, on Dr. Bev, for the, for the kingdom of God's sake as we come together. Amen. And as you sow your seed, I'm, I'm speaking God's supernatural blessing, favor and increase on your life, on your ministry, on your, uh, on your church. Uh, on your on your business, on your family, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I pray right now, and I thank you for those that you are attaching to this vision and this assignment for the state of Arizona. I thank you for those who come with gifts, their gifts and their talents, Father, and their ability that you have put into their life for this specific assignment. I receive them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, Father, I also bless them that, that you're calling to give and to sow into this ministry, both in their tithes and in their offerings. I decree supernatural favor, blessing, and increase on their lives in Jesus' name. Now, what you do is uh, right there on Facebook or YouTube, how you listen to this, Instagram. If you, if you look down there, you'll be able to find out how to give. You can either use the, the, uh, the link right there, or you can use Zelle. Uh, Zelle is very easy. 
uh, at I Am Ministries, or you can use the Cash App at Dollar Sign Apostle I Am, or you can use the QR code right there. It, all those avenues take you right to our giving ministry, our, our, our ministry. And, and again, I thank God for each of you. Again, that's the link, or you can go to Zelle, or you can use the Cash App, and we receive your tithe, we receive your offerings in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we bless your people. For, what, for their faithfulness to you and for this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. So until we see you again uh, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m., this has been Apostle Alfred Craig and Dr. Beverly Craig saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.